Hey, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. Anybody that's studied the Bible uh, and been in, into the Word for any period of time has probably heard the term, the Shekinah glory, the Shekinah glory of God. Um, and it's a very commonly used term, and uh, it's a term that I use to use, but I'm not going to use it anymore. And I'm going to show you why in this video. Let's pray. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the blood that was shed. Uh, thank you for our salvation. Uh, God, thank you for your holy Bible. And um, we just ask you now to um, just uh, uh, give me clarity of mind uh, in these next few moments to uh, uh, explain the Shekinah glory in jesus name amen okay so a little bit deceptive because the shekinah glory <laughs> it ain't really glory all right so let's uh let's look at that now i'm gonna uh i'm gonna be reading some stuff here and i'm gonna i'm gonna put it up on the screen there for you and uh, um uh if you see me holding up a finger and with a number well that's just me for when i'm editing so i know which uh, a, a page to put up right here because I don't have the sound when, I, when I'm editing. Amen? Okay, so number one, all right, uh, the word Shekinah is not in the Bible. And what we've always been told is that the description is in the uh, classic Hebrew and Aramaic manuscripts of the Old and New Testaments, the word Shekinah is actually not found. It was first introduced by Jewish rabbis through targums and literature in the period between the completion of the Old Testament and the onset of the New Testament. The etymology of Shekinah is from the Hebrew word Shekan, which means to reside or permanently stay. Okay, so that's that's where that word come from. And hey, it's not in your Hebrew Bible. It's not in your Aramaic bio, Bible. Why are we using it, right? Okay, so uh, two, <laughs> all right, the Hebrew word Shekinah, and that's what it looks like written in Hebrew, is used to describe the visible manifestation of God's presence and glory, and is usually depicted as a cloud. It comes from the Hebrew word Shekinah, which means to dwell, and literally means he caused to dwell. Shekinah signifies that it was a divine visitation of the Lord God on earth, and that while in proximity to the Shekinah, the connection to God is more readily perceivable. Okay, so that's basically, that's what we've been taught to believe. And uh, then when situations in the scripture occur, uh, like Solomon prays, and the glory of God filled the temple. We, we, we were calling that the Shekinah glory. Or when uh, uh, Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration uh, with Peter, James, and John, and, 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 and that light appeared, with, we call that the Shekinah glory. And, uh, um, and, and this was a, a, a term that we adopted uh, in Christianity, but really it wasn't, it's not part of Christianity, and it really has deeper and more sinister roots, which uh, here we'll, we'll look at now. Um, okay. All right, so where it came from, and that's number three. All right, so... Shekinah in the Kabbalah. Jewish mysticism, or Kabbalah, gives the Shekinah a distinctly female quality. One of the earliest works of Jewish mysticism, Sefer Habahir, states that when the righteous behave appropriately, Shekinah rests among them, and through their deeds, she rests in the bosom of the Holy One, and makes them fruitful and increases them. The Zohar compares the Shekinah to a mother, sister, daughter, or bride. Kabbalists also associated Shekinah with the clouds of glory, which guided the Israelites during their wandering in the desert, and the pillar of fire 
that warmed them by night. In this telling, the Shekinah is a protective maternal presence on the Israelites' journey from slavery to freedom. Kabbalistic cosmology is rooted in the notion that divine energy has masculine and feminine polarities that can be unified through human action. This idea is reflected in the ten sephirot, the emanations or attributes of divinely organized in the well-known image of the tree of life. Each of the seraphot has a masculine or feminine quality, a counterpart on the opposing side of the tree. Shekinah is associated with Malkut, kingship, the lowest of the Sifrat, and the intermediary between the upper emanations and the material world, the recipient of the divine energy flowing from above just prior to its manifestation in physical reality. In some accounts, this makes Shekinah the closest Sifra to the material world and part of divinity most readily experienced in nature. The idea of the Shekinah as the counterpart to the masculine element of God is, according to the Kabbalah scholar Gershom Shuklam, one of Jewish mysticism's most significant innovations. The fact that it obtained recognition in spite of the obvious difficulty of reconciling it with the conception of the absolute unity of God, and that no other element of Kabbalism won such a degree of popular approval is proof that it responded to a deep-seated religious need. Wow. That's all just straight, 100% New Age, demonic mysticism. There is nothing biblical in that. Amen? Wow. All right. So then another another uh, link we'll see to Shekinah is Islam. That's number five. In Islam, the word Shekinah, Sakinah, is related to the Hebrew word Shekinah and means special peace or peace of God. It can also refer to tranquility, serenity, and peace of mind that comes from being aware of God's presence. Sakina is associated with piety and divine inspiration, and in Islamic mysticism, it can signify an inner spiritual illumination. The word Sakina comes from the word, root word Sakina, which means dwelled or remained in place. The prefix al, the, indicates that it has an abstract meaning rather than being a name. Sufi writings also associate Sakina with stillness and habitation, which further supports its connection to Shekinah's indwelling nature. <laughs> so, Jewish mysticism has it. Islamic mysticism has it, but the Bible doesn't have it. And why, why would the Jewish mystics and the Islamic mystics all have it? We got to trace it back a little bit farther. And that brings us to the last, which is, and I ain't got six fingers. That's number six <laughs> for me when you're editing. Amen. That's number six. All right. And, uh, Look at here. Turns out that Shekinah is really a Canaanite goddess. This is from the Encyclopedia Mythica. While the Bible does not mention the name Shekinah, she is nevertheless bound to extremely old traditions and closely relates to the ancient goddesses. Particularly significant is the Canaanite goddess Asherah, who at the beginning of the Israelite settlement in the land of Canaan was often referred to as Yahweh's consort. 
the manifestation of a loving maternal entity ready to defend her people, even from God himself, brings a feeling of comfort that a paternal invisible entity like Yahweh cannot bestow upon his worshipers. What this is, is the divine feminine. This is a female feminine devil, demonic energy. And its appeal is to the flesh, to the feelings, and to the emotions. And we can see the manifestation of it in modern Christianity today. In modern, what they call worship, right? We're going to enter into a spirit of worship and, and into the Shekinah glory and <clears throat> That's where you're getting like Hillsong and elevation worship, all this modern stuff. If you'll notice, it's all very soft and it's feminine. And even the men, when they get up and they start talking during this worship, they, their voices, they get all motherly and soft. And see, this is, this is, this is not the Holy Spirit. This is a, another spirit. And yeah, it feels all warm and fuzzy and good, but it's not biblical. It's not of God. And uh, listen, I know many of us have used this term uh, innocently uh, because what we're thinking of when, when we use the term, we're thinking of these manifestations of God uh, when he filled the temple and on the on the. Uh, 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 Mount of Transfigurations in these times, but but listen, that that is our <laughs> male God <laughs> showing up in the person of His Holy Spirit. This is not the divine counterpart. This is not the bride of Yahweh. This is not some feminine energy. Amen. So yeah, I, I'm not going to use that Shekinah anymore now that I know where it came from, and I advise everyone else to uh, not use it easy either, especially when you see all this divine feminine, this femininity, this femininity uh, 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 creeping into Christianity. Amen? Amen. So, hey, like we used to say in prison, now you know. <laughs> we'll see you in the next one.